Now, if the teeth are not too crowded, you can you can place veneers on the teeth without orthodontics, as long as they're not way out of the arch. I first cut between the teeth. I like this burr for that. You have to keep a steady hand and just go straight through to be sure everything draws. Very important that you include the interproximal surfaces. That's called wrapping. Uh, doctors Pascal Manier and Douglas did the studies on that at the University of uh, Minnesota Dental School years ago and there are a lot of reasons why you want to wrap the preparations, meaning the veneer will fit on the facial, the incisal, the mesial, and the distal of the tooth. And you can look at that video on wrapping. So I want to first cut the teeth back into the correct arch alignment, then prepare the tooth for a veneer. Then you remove the half millimeter or so of facial uh, tooth structure to make room for the veneer. But first cut them back into the correct arch alignment before the actual veneer preparation. So I'm looking at the, at the teeth from the incisal with that either fat or skinny mirror and seeing how much tooth structure has to be removed to move the tooth back into the arch alignment. And so I do that first, cut them back into the arch alignment. Then I remove another half millimeter of tooth structure for the veneer preparation. Now if the teeth are way out of alignment, you may have to remove so much tooth structure that the tooth would need endodontic. So in those cases, discuss it with the patient. Now if it's a 60, 70 year old patient, they may be unwilling to go through orthodontic. So you, you may have to prepare a tooth that's way out of the arch alignment back into the arch alignment and perform endodontics on the tooth. I've done that in the past, but discuss it with the patient and see what their preference is. If they're willing to go through the orthodontics and move the teeth back into the arch alignment, that's normally the option of choice, but you're gonna add you know, six months or a year or so to the treatment, and if someone, especially if they're an older patient, they may be unwilling to do that, so see if there's another option, and endodontics may be a practical option. I'm being sure everything draws. I, I spend a lot of time looking at the preps occlusally with either the skinny mirror or the fat mirror to be sure that all the preps will draw. Hello, this video is a small portion of a complete comprehensive video. If you'd like to see this complete comprehensive case and many other complete comprehensive cases, click on the link in the description below. I'm using the fine chamfer diamond to cut the margin. Now these teeth are not in the aesthetic zone. Have the patient smile and take a photograph and if they only show either no uh, lower anterior tooth or just the incisal part of the anterior tooth, you don't have to have those preps prepped, those teeth prepped subgingivally. This lower anterior gingival tissue is normally very friable anyway. And so if you try to go subgingival, it's very delicate tissue and may tear. So I really like prepping lower anterior teeth just down to the gingival margin or even a, a little super gingival. Again, we're trying to have at least six tenths of a millimeter of preparation at the margin if possible. If there's not some depth to the prep, it's hard for the technicians to read. Now sometimes all you can use is a flame shape, is a flame shaped diamond. Now I'm looking at the patient from the, the front, face on, to be sure these incisal edges are parallel to their pupillary line. And I want to reduce at least two millimeters, I want at least two millimeters of clearance incisally when I'm prepping lower anterior teeth. Now the lower anterior teeth occlude with normally the palatal of the upper anterior teeth. So have the patient close together and look with a mirror and be sure there's enough clearance between the incisal of the lower anterior teeth and the palatal of the upper anterior teeth. See, I'm just checking, checking the clearance. And I want to be, I'd like to be able to put a flame-shaped diamond between the preparation of the lower incisal edge of the teeth and the palatal 
of the maxillary anterior teeth. They just check it with the mirror when the patient bites together. And I'm, I'd like two millimeters. The, the studies show that you can have up to four millimeters of cantilevered restoration off of a lower anterior teeth. I try to stay with about two millimeters. You want at least a millimeter and a half, but I try to go with two millimeters just to be sure the technician has got enough room for the restoration. You check it again with the mirror, be sure there's enough incisal facial reduction. Now remember, if the patient's got a vertical overbite, you've got to be sure there's enough space on the facial of the teeth, not just the incisal. The incisal will be occluding with the palatal surface of the maxillary anterior teeth, as will the facial. So you've got to be sure there's enough reduction all the way down the facial surface of those mandibular anterior teeth. Just re-prepping, being sure everything draws. It gets kind of tight in between the teeth, so I'm going to prep in between the teeth with a flame-shaped diamond. That's the Dental Minute. These techniques work, and they work every time. Are you ready to take your dentistry practice to the highest level possible? Of course you are. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com where you will get Dr. Cupper's greatest work and best cases. Here's what you're going to get when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. Incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos. You will get an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos and Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference, before and after photos of Dr. Cupper's fantastic restored cases. Cases. And all of this, I repeat, all of this is just $40 a month. This is something you cannot pass up. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com.